seven things you probably didn't know you could do in GIMP coming up right now. Pro tip number one. So Photoshop has this cool feature that allows you to clip one layer inside another to instantly add an image inside a shape. But GIMP doesn't have this feature, or does it? Let me show you how to get the same result in GIMP. So here I have the same images again and the custom shape. And what we want to do in order to clip this image layer into the shape is to first put them into a grouped layer. Then you're going to right click on your image layer, select composite mode and clip to background and boom, you have the clipping mask effect in GIMP. Pro tip number two, copying a layer mask from one layer to another. Let's say you want to apply a new color tone on a new layer, but you want to mask out that edit so it's only being applied to the foreground and not the background or the sky. Well, what you can do is you can copy this layer mask here and place it on this new layer. How? All you have to do is right click on the layer mask, select mask to selection, grab your new layer and then apply it as a selection and boom, you no longer have that edit on the sky, just the foreground. Tip number three, use the output levels in the levels tool to create the illusion of distance. Let's say you're creating a composite and you have multiple elements in the scene, but you want one to look like it's further from the main subject. For example, in this image, I have a foreground of some grassy area and our model, and then a couple of moons. The moons should be further from the model. So if I turn this layer off, you'll notice it's darker and the contrast level matches the foreground more so now than it did before, and it has the appearance of being closer than it does when you have less contrast. So reducing the contrast level will give the illusion that that object is further from another object. How did I do this? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and take this layer and I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to merge this layer group. And then under colors, levels, you have an output levels section here that has a range of tones from zero to 255, which is the same as up here. So there's a total of 256 levels or bars in the histogram that contains all the colors and brightness levels of those pixels. And with output levels, you can reduce the number of tones in an image to whatever you need for your creative vision. In this case, we want to reduce the number of blacks and shadows to reduce the contrast. So if I adjust the output levels to the right, that image will receive less contrast and will have fewer tones, if any, in the shadows and probably none in the black, which creates a lower contrast image. And that's a little bit too much. So if I bring this down to around 20 to 25, and now it has the illusion that it's further away from our main model. Tip number four, scaling more than one layer at a time. Let's say you need to scale a layer larger or smaller, but you have another corresponding layer that works together with that layer. You'll need to either scale them separately or you can scale them at the same time to ensure that they stay in proportion to each other. For example, I have our giraffe here behind the mountains and the clouds, as well as a reflection of our giraffe in the water. So if I want to scale this giraffe larger or smaller, it would probably be better to scale both of these layers at the same time. So if I grab my scale tool and begin scaling my reflection, you can see that I will have a little bit of a problem trying to create the same size for the other layer as well. So instead, what we can do is click right next to this eyeball and you'll get this little link icon. And when you add another layer to that link, 
both of those layers are now linked together. And then when I go and scale one of the layers, unfortunately, they both don't scale at the same time when you have the tool activated. It's only until after you apply the scaling to one layer that the other layer will be updated as well. Tip number five, confining your edits to a selection. Let's say you want to fill in your main subject with a solid color. Well, if you try and go to colorize and colorize, it's just adding that color tone and mapping it to the tonal range. What you want instead is a solid color of your subject. So what you need to do is create a new layer, right click on the layer of the subject you want to add that color to, select alpha to selection to make a selection, grab your new color layer, and then fill it in with a color. From here, you can then customize that layer based on your creative vision. Pro tip number six, inverting a mask color. Let's say you're working on a project where you want to separate the foreground and the background. So you make a selection of your subject and then you apply that layer mask to remove the background and then you apply your edits. But then you realize your background doesn't match the rest of your edits. Do you have to make a selection of your background separately? No. All you have to do is take this image layer with the layer mask, duplicate it, make sure your layer mask is selected. I'm going to go ahead and turn these two layers off here. And then we're going to go up to colors and select invert, which will invert the colors of your layer mask. And that will remove your subject and keep the background. Now you can take this layer, make sure you have your image preview selected. Then you can go ahead and make your adjustments to that background separate from the rest of the layers you created. Pro tip number seven, adjust your opacity when using the scale tool. Why? Well, let's say you want to increase a layer and you grab the scale tool and you begin increasing the size of it, but you can't see any of the layers below it. So what you need to do is drop the opacity so you can see the layers and the canvas so you can resize that particular layer based on the composition you want in comparison to the rest of the layers of the image. All right, to continue elevating your GIMP editing skills, please subscribe if you haven't done so already and check out these playlists right here to discover more ways to fulfill your creative vision with GIMP.